we got more important stuff to talk about because the season is starting next week. And because the season is starting next week, we got to do team previews, which is great to look ahead. The first one we're going to do, obviously, is going to be the New York Rangers. That's what you get when you start the channel. Yay. Um, although the Islanders were the lead plenty of the summer, Anthony. So don't worry about that one. Um, guys, here we go. Uh, John, I'm going to start with you on this. What do you most like about this team? They're exciting. Uh, there's a lot of intrigue with this team because you have the influence of a lot of young talent coming up through this team. You have two super, an elite player, a top 10 player in the league in Artemi Panarin, a superstar player in Mika Zibanejad. You, you look like you have a franchise goalie locked up. You have one of the three best defensemen in the league right now at Adam Fox. I would say him, Hedman, and who, who else would you want to put in your top three? Yossi? I bet Adam Fox is a top three defenseman in this league right now. So you've, you've got core pieces. They added a lot of toughness. Um, they've added some leadership and they added some veterans in there. So now this locker room is going to have more stability than it had last year. And Stat Boy Steven has said this to me multiple times personally, and I, I'm pretty sure he said this on here and on Wardy. But um, they, the Rangers had a ton of issues that most normal teams wouldn't have to deal with over the span of three seasons in one season last year. The Tony incident, the, the Truba injury, the Panarin incident. Uh, I mean, Quinn, that incident, and, and Nabla coming in, and then Quinn losing the locker room and everything. You know, they had a lot of adversity to deal with. So this, a lot of the things that happened last year should not happen again this year. And it's going to be interesting to see how this team comes together. I will say one thing. The adjustment period is something that fans are going to have to have a lot of patience with. And we saw this with Vigneault in 2013-14. That, that October was brutal. One of the worst months in Rangers recent history, I should say. But have patience. Gallant will guide them in the right direction. Trust me on that. I'll, I'll jump in with mine first. Uh, and and yes, it, it, it's, it's it's Gerard Gallant. We already know about the talent pool and we already know about that. They've kind of moved things around to be a more gritty team, but Gavant's job is now to make those pieces fit. And I had zero confidence in David Quinn trying to do that at the end of last year. Now, with that being said, even though we were at the game last week, you, by the way, you could check out that video that we have on there. Um, as we watched Anthony's Islanders shut out the, the Rangers they still looked better in their 4 nothing loss versus the Islanders than they did in any of the losses versus the Islanders at the end of the last season. That, that was It was just awful. At least there was some fight in that team. Gerard Gallant is a steadying influence, and the peaks and the valleys of the season are going to be a lot less. Yes, I'm looking. Uh, yes, the, the talent would be yours. That I agree with you on that. I'm looking at Gerard Gallant and saying that's that's going to be the key factor, and he just fits in with the murderer's row of head coaches that are in the Metropolitan Division. I can't wait to see, I can't wait to see what this team is is going to do uh, for the regular season, Anthony. I mean, for this is easy. I mean, their skill led by Artemi Panarin. Um, you know, Artemi Panarin is one of the best players in the game. Um, you know, he has the ability to, to carry the Rangers, really. Um, you know, combine him with Zabenajad, who's developed into a really good player in his own, and then the hopeful for you guys, the impending breakouts of Lafreniere and, and Capo Caco, and then, of course, Nor Adam, Norris Trophy winner Adam Fox on the defense. Um, this team's got a lot of good mix of skill. Um you know, it's just them. It's just really about the young guys taking that next step and really propelling them to the next level because, you know, Panarin does need more help. But um, if everything falls their way in terms of development of their young guys, um, you know, this team is going to be a good team for, you know, many years to come. But um, Panarin, Panarin's elite. I think any other team, would, you know, would love to have him. Um, so for me, you know, him quite easily is he's what I like about the team the most. I mean, he's. He's 
he proved right from the beginning in Chicago that he was a really good player. And then in Columbus on a team, not nearly as skilled. Um, he had really, really good years with them. Um, the guy's legitimate and, you know, the Rangers need him healthy and in the lineup to, you know, have a good chance of making the playoffs. All right. So now moving on, you got to look at the goaltending situation and Filk, go ahead. How do you assess the goalies? Well, I don't want to make any judgments off a of preseason. The goaltending has looked up and down. Um, it, it's really, it should be Igor one, Georgiev two. And that was Quinn's mistake last year. And you pointed that out so many times. You were all over that. Um, I, I would say, if anything, you're – shut up. <laughs> I know exactly what you were getting at. But, yeah, so – you're looking at a one and a two and hopefully the right rotation this time around, no carousel, no games, no nonsense, no competition. As much as I like Georgiev, I feel like his, his value has been tanked and I don't think that he's anywhere close to star quality. And I would hope that Gallant would see this as well and say, Hey, Igor's the guy let's go with our guy. So I, I like the goaltending. The defense really has to help them out this season, which I think it will. But Igor is a number one going forward, should be a solid, solid goaltender. So I, I like what I see there. Well, as I said last year, it was – and I mean, most of it was even before Anthony started joining us. But this this team it should have had Igor at number one and Georgiev – was a distant number two, like so far distant, you would need binoculars to see him. Not necessarily a Mike Keenan number two, but that's a different story. It, 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 he proved it. I mean, he's, if he plays too many games, I think he gets exposed. And that's just where we're looking at. And I, Sisterkin is the guy you have to develop if this team is going to be great. Sisterkin's got to be there. The one thing about Sisterkin is he's going to have to be healthy. He had the groin injury last year. Uh, the year before was a car accident. Can't get on him about the car accident, but it's he's he's had some he's had some problems with injuries. His save percentage usually the second month of the season is is outstanding. Uh, in February, I believe he had a nine thirty both the years so far. Now he's got to do it for a full year. So well, let's see if he's really the guy to do it. Because we're going to be talking about goaltending across the way uh, in about a few more minutes. And Anthony, what's your thoughts on the Rangers goaltending? I'll start with Gorgiev. Um, you know, I, I don't think he's particularly that good. Um, I think the Rangers missed the boat on trading him. What was it, two years ago, maybe? I think two years, yeah. Maybe, yeah, the Maple yeah. Leafs were interested, possibly, when they were looking for goaltending help. But that's in the past. But um, Gorgiev is what he is. You know, he's. He's a guy that, you know, can be a backup goalie in this league. But if he plays too much, uh, his kind of true colors shine through. Um, I don't, You know, he's not a guy you can rely on as your starter or an extended period of time. Um, but as far as Shesterkin goes, I think we all know it. The guy the guy can be an elite goaltender. Um, you know, last year, you know, he had 916 save percentage, which let's face it, fellas, 916 save percentages isn't, isn't bad. But for a guy with his capability, you know, he's capable of, Posting a 930 save percentage, and that, you know though that type of numbers is elite for a goalie. So, um, you know if he if he could stay healthy and and play at the top of his game, um, there's no doubt in my mind he can be that guy. Um, I just think he needs you know, and as he gets older and more used to the North American game, he'll become more consistent. Um, you know he'll get there. There's no doubt in my mind about that. But um, again, for, so for him, it's really just about staying healthy and just trying to play at that consistent high level for the whole season, which is what the truly elite goalies do. But it takes some guys some time to really develop into that. But um, I have no issues with the Rangers goaltending. Um, yeah, they could get a better guy than Gorgia to back up, but it's not a it's not a huge glaring issue. It's not really worth trying to address at this point. So as long as Shesterkin stays healthy, I think the Rangers will be, uh, will be solid in goal. Now, this is the one question before we move on to the next thing. It, that I have is, is this going to be a season where the backup goaltender really impacts the team, given that there's going to be the pressure to play more games for the Olympic break. And then you got the compact uh, schedule after the Olympic break too. 
Yeah, I mean that that's 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 a good point. Um, you know, just just like my my boy across uh across the other side of the river. More on them um, in a minute. In uh Ilya, same case with Igor. These guys, they none of them have played a full 82 game season yet. Chesterkin had 12 games his first year, and obviously last year was the 56 game season, and then he was hurt. So um this is gonna be his first full year as a starter playing in an 82 game season. So um, yeah, he's played full seasons in the KHL, but you know, it's different here in North America. So, um, that's that, yeah, that definitely plays a role. You know, I'm, sh- I'm sure they'll monitor that. They don't want to burn him out. Um, but I think a lot of goalies are good. Well, I should say a lot of young goalies are going to have this type of issue this year. The veterans, you know, like Vasilevsky, we all know who they are. Hellebuck, you know, they'll jump right back into it, but it's the younger guys where it's going to be interesting to see how they, you know, kind of react to playing that full season so but yeah that's a good point mark it's um it's especially with the olympic break thrown in there it's a whole wrinkle a whole new wrinkle for these younger guys who've never gone through it before Falk. in terms of what anthony was just saying I, i'd have to agree um you're really going to start to see guys who haven't adjusted to a full season schedule yet maybe struggle a little bit with it in the case or in the cases i should say of uh Shesterkin and Sorokin they've played full seasons in the KHL mm. so they are used to a bigger workload uh, yes it's different because the ice surfaces and the scheduling is a bit different. It's a little more uh, lenient on the body, I would say, in the KHL because of le- our more traveling with less games. So it's it's a, it's a lot less of a compacted schedule as opposed to the NHL. But I overall agree with Anthony's point there. I think you're gonna you're gonna see a lot of uh, adjustments being made for younger goaltenders. I, I think Igor and Ilya will both be able to handle it. As for the Varlamov injury, I don't know the extent of the injury, and I'll, I'll probably I'll save that for when we get to the Islanders. But <laughs> uh, Igor, I I think will be okay because he, they rode him for a while before that car accident back in uh, I think it was February, the end of February, twenty twenty. Mm-hmm. So he was really good for a while, and they were really really putting everything on him. He was handling the load. So I think he'll be all right. And I think if the defense is better, which I think they will be, I think it'll take some time, but they will eventually figure everything out in this new system. I think that'll help a bit too, because he won't, he won't have to be bailing them out of every game as he did in 2019, 20. So I I think Igor is going to be all right. Which goes right back to what we're saying again before. Um, does this team have the depth to compete? Phil, we're going to start with you. That's really the key issue here is do they do they really have what it takes to compete? In normal years where a, a Pittsburgh would be at full power to start the season or Washington hadn't lost a top four defenseman, or something like that, I might lean towards no. But this year, I think with the moves that they've made, and if you get the development that you're looking for to the three big young forwards in Lafreniere, Kako, and Kravtsov, they could have the depth to compete. And I, I think ultimately they do. It's just a matter of how those three develop. And you have Barkley Goudreau coming in. That'll help boost your, your bottom six. Sammy Blay looks to be every bit the part and is starting to show Ranger fans the reason why they traded for him. And I get, he's never going to win everybody over because Butch Navich went the other way. And there's always going to be that sect of Ranger fans that will hate Sammy Blay because of that, which is not Sammy Blay's fault. you direct your anger, at Chris Drury there. And I get that, but Sammy Blay is a great addition to this team. Don't, don't get anything twisted there. So I, I think overall the depth that they've been missing in the bottom six that we've complained about for the last, what, two, three seasons now has finally been replenished a bit. And I think that's going to make them more competitive because Gallant can actually roll four lines without having to worry about a fringe NHL player like Di Giuseppe or someone like that 
getting important minutes late in a game because you have to roll four lines to keep everyone fresh. So, yeah, I, I, I say this team has the depth. And having Pittsburgh out or Pittsburgh down, you know, two men to start the season and of getting Malkin out for two months, leaving Jeff Carter as their, their number one center, that helps them go a long way in this division. They've got to get points early. So let's hope that adjustment period isn't too long. Uh, I'm going to say that they have the depth, and I'm saying it, if it's a yes, no answer, I'm going to go with yes. I like what they did on the third and fourth line. I think it's even better. I think they have got a couple guys that could step in both uh, defensively and uh, on on the bottom six that could really help. Obviously, if Timmy Panarin goes down again, the New York Rangers are in trouble. But they might be able to stretch it out as a team. They're going to be coached better because – Artemi Panarin is the ultimate deodorant. He's MVP for a reason, or MVP candidate, I should say, two years ago. And now with, I, I keep saying this over and over again, Gerard Gallant's going to make them a better team because they're going to get more down the lineup. I got a guy that I'm going to be talking about in a minute uh, on when we talk about players, and I'm going to mention him. But it's it, it's there's a couple key guys that are going to be very important to this team's success. Now, there are a couple players. If they lose them, they're 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 in they're in some trouble. If they lost Sisterkin for a while, they're in a little bit of trouble. And you need to see they, they they this team did not look the same after Jacob Drew's injury. And we all and Ranger fans love the rip on this guy because of the contract and what the expectations were, but. They they were not the same after Trouba went out, after Kreider went out. So let's see if they could still like have some physicality and be a, a quality team when uh, if those guys have trouble. And usually Chris Kreider always has like a two week injury. Anthony, um, yeah, they they have depth. Um, I I you know AZ uh, had a comment above that um I saw that he said it has it has improved. Um, how tested it, it? How tested is it? Is the question. But um, no, they 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 got the depth. Um, obviously, are they deep as are they deep as some other teams? No. Um, but it's a lot better than it was in the past. I think Morgan Barron can step in and play a fourth line role. If let's say Kevin Rooney went down, um, you know Julian Gauthier is kind of knocking on the door, being an everyday player. So he's a guy that could play um, in the event that there's an injury. Um, you know Barclay Goudreau helps. Sammy Blay helps. So. Uh, they definitely improved. Um, I, like Mark, you mentioned, you know, if Panarin was down, but you could say that any team. I mean, if any team loses your top elite player, you know, you're you're kind of screwed. So there aren't many teams that could say, oh, I could lose our best player and still have, you know, depth to to really. Um, well, I guess Nikita Kucherov is a is a great point in Tampa Bay. They didn't have him, and they but they're they're that team was a machine last year. Um, but I don't really have any problems with their depth. Um, I think it's I think it's you know good enough for them to compete. Um, and like any other team, your goal is to stay healthy. But you know that's something you can never predict. Um, but overall, I you know I, I do think they're they're deep enough to have some moderate success. All right. So when you're looking at this team right now, what's the player that you're keying on? And I'll start you guys off, and we'll go in reverse order. On this one, I'll go Philip next. My guy is Capo Caco. This is I'm 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 really looking at him now. The the reins are off. He's getting bigger. Everybody's excited about him in the comments, so we all know. But this this guy looks like he's going to finally give us a glimpse of what he's really going to be. And if he's going to end up being a top six forward this season. And actually break the 20-goal barrier. I'm not going to say the 30-goal barrier. That's too much pressure to put on a kid. But he's 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 not even 21 years old yet. And th- th- this is going to be great if he could start becoming who he's going to be. That's why I'm, I'm looking at him. Phil, I go to you. Easily Alexi Lafreniere. Everything is on this kid. He was the number one overall pick. He was touted to be the franchise player. He's touted to be the guy, probably the future face of the franchise at some point. And I think he will be the captain one day. And this is where it's going to have to start. He's going to be playing with most likely Chris Kreider and Mika Zibanejad. He's going to be playing in the top six. He's going to be the play driver to replace Pavel Bochnevich. And I I think this is the year where he absolutely breaks out, especially if he stays with that line long term. 
and they keep him on the left side. The one thing, like I said at the very start of the show when you introduced me, is they got to put him on power play one. It can't be Ryan Strom off that right side wall. You can't be. You need a left-handed shot on that unit. You need a shooter off that wall. You need to give teams another element to be scared of. He has an elite shot. He absolutely has an elite shot. We've all seen what he can do. We've all seen him snipe out top corners. This kid's incredible. So this is his time. And I'm totally – my eyes are going to be fixated on him. And Kaka would be my number two. So – Alexi Lafreniere is the guy that you've got to watch out for if you're watching the Rangers. Anthony, um, Mark, I'm gonna I'm gonna say Capo Caco too. Um, I agree. Phil Lafreniere is a guy you got to watch out for. You know, he's he was the first All World pick for a reason. Um, it is only his second year, but Ka- like Caco is a little different. Um, you know, I think this is a guy that you know for the Rangers really take the next step. He needs to be that player that everyone thought he could be when they drafted him second overall. You know this. I mean, it's it's fine if he develops, let's just say, into a you know 15 goal guy who plays, who gives you really good defense. But if he becomes that you know 30 30 guy, then that's kind of like a game changer. So if he could become that player, I mean, you, that just makes the Rangers that much of a scarier team. However, if he doesn't really, if he doesn't really take the next step offensively, I think a lot more questions and pressure is going to fall on his shoulders. Um, and then I think that becomes even harder for him to play with that weighing on him. Uh, and then maybe the Rangers have to have a different conversation, you know, when it comes to looking at their situation going forward and, you know, how much to give him and, you know, how long they want to, you know, because he's still going to want to, I think, a decent amount of money when his ELC is up and you, you really want to pay top dollar to a guy who's not giving you the production of a, you know, second overall pick. But um, so for me, it's him. He's got bigger. He's got stronger. Um, you know, he's a year more experienced. Let's see what you got now. Cause you know, the Rangers, like I said, they, they really need him to be that player to take the next step. Yeah. You want to see that, that growth in him. And yeah. by the way, uh, in our bar talk segment in, in about maybe 20 minutes, we'll be going over a player that really is comparable with, uh, Kako's growth, but we're going to move on to this one, which is what what player could be most critical to this team, Philk? I gotta stay right where I just was. Uh, it, it, it's Lafreniere because if he develops into the top six forward that they think he will can and will be this year, then that goes a long way towards replacing Pablo Buchnevich's offense. And I, I've said that I think this player will be a point per game or better player at some point in his career. If he starts getting close to that this year, this team could go a long way. And I, I'm not saying cup or anything like that, but they could be a real legitimate contender, be a playoff team, make possibly make some noise in the playoffs. So it, it, I, I think Alexi Lafreniere is most critical because when you think about it, you know what you're going to get out of our Temi Panarin. He's going to score at a 90-plus point pace, 90 to 100 points, possibly even more than 100 points. Adam Fox is probably going to give you Norris caliber play, whether he gives you 70-plus points or not, or 65 points. I don't know, but he's going to be a Norris. He's going to be in the Norris conversation. Shesterkin would probably be the second player because there are some questions that are unanswered for me about Igor, whether he can carry the load for a full season whether he actually is the guy or not, he still has to, he's shown us glimpses that he is, but he still has to answer the question. But, and I get what Anthony was saying about Capo Caco. He's right about that. If he doesn't start to show you something this year, then the conversations change. Then the organization's outlook on him changes as well. Then there's a lot more pressure on his shoulders, but Lafreniere is the guy. Lafreniere has to be the top six forward that they need him to be. He has to replace Butchnevich this year. So uh, for me, it's it's Lafreniere. I'm going to point out our interview with Dan Rosen last week. And um, the guy that I'm about to say, because we know we we pretty much know what we're going to get from the Criders of Banajed line, the Panarin Strom line, is this going to be where some guys fit in. But Philip Heedle really could be the key to the New York Rangers season. If he ends up bringing quality play 
and um, maybe even a little bit of physicality. We know about the we know about the thighs. We know about his legs. Now you're gonna have to start to bring it. I mean, we could talk about Capo Caco being, hey, show us what you got. It's sort of like Rick and Morty with the big giant head. Show me what you got. That's what Filipino has to do. And it's it's going. I think he's going to be critical because of the line that he plays on. I still am not 100% sold that Lafreniere is going to be the right wing for Kreider and Zibanejad because I still think there's a possibility Chris Kreider might move down. And if you're going from the template of, let's say you use the Tampa Bay Lightning template, I think you're closer to using Gaudreau on the right, Kreider on the on the left, and Heedle as the center. I'm just throwing that out there as a possibility. That's where it might be. I but you know what? I, I would love it if if Lafreniere is the right wing and Chris Kreider puts up his career uh goals of the season. Remember, president of the Chris Kreider fan club. But back to Filipino. Filipino is my guy. He if he brings a quality of the bottom six that he can play good defensively and score. This team is on a different level, Anthony. Filk refer he didn't Filk didn't pick him, but he referenced him. Um, I'm gonna go with Igor Shesterkin. Um, you know, this is a guy that I think everyone's in agreement that he can be elite. He's not there yet, and I think he's I think he's got to prove a lot to put himself in that conversation. Um, and I'm not I'm not saying like Kako, it's kind of like a make or break year. It's not with Igor either, but I think this is the year where the Rangers are really gonna gauge. All right, do we have our goaltender for? an extended period of time here um or you know do we have to maybe start putting some more resources in developing another goalie i think um he's got to stay healthy um and he's got to play the top of his game because you know in this league if you don't have good goaltending yeah there may be been some exceptions to the rule of, rule over the years you're not really going to win many hockey games and if igor either can't stay healthy and is hurt that puts the rangers in a bad spot because that leaves him with gorgiev um, or if he's just not playing up to his level, that's going to, you know, that's going to hurt the Rangers. He, need, he needs to be that, you know, I'm not saying he needs to be 930, but he needs to be, you know, like 9, like 923, 924. I think that's kind of where he really needs to be for the Rangers to maximize their success and their ability. Um, so I think he's got to get there because uh, if he doesn't, you know, that, that could really hurt them. But then again, you know, uh, that's the case with a lot of teams. Goaltending is that important. Um, I kind of equate it to pitching in baseball, uh, you know, having a good quarterback in football. Um, it's just how it is. And the thing is, he has that potential. He's just got to show it now for over an 82 game season. One thing to mention, though, just to flash back to Vegas, Gerard Gallant in the first season of the Las Vegas Golden Knights, I believe he went through five goaltenders. He definitely went through four. I think he went to a fifth at one point. So if crisis does hit, He's already been through a similar situation like that before. Okay, so we already talked about what we like about these uh, about the New York Rangers. John, I'm going to go to you first. What do you least like about them? <laughs> a lot of question marks. Uh, the kids, they're a question mark. Lafreniere is a question mark. Kako's a question mark. Kravtsov's a question mark. Heedle's a question mark. Igor is still a question mark. I mean, there, there's not enough of I know what I'm getting on this team. I know what I'm getting from Panarin. I know what I'm getting from Zibanejad. I know what I'm getting from Fox. But after that, what what am I sure of? <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm sure that Ryan Strom will probably give you around 50 to 60 points. Okay, but can he improve to the point where we don't have to worry about center depth? Because that that's a big that's a big part that I also don't like about this team is center depth. I don't I don't like center depth after Mika's advantage. Yet. I like Ryan Strom, but only to a point. And I like him because of his chemistry with Artem Panarin. So the, the center depth really isn't great. Um the depth on defense, I like the addition of Nils Lundquist, but I don't like I haven't liked what I've seen from Keandre Miller since the first half of the previous season ended. He hasn't played well since then, and that was before Jacob Truba's injury. I don't, I don't like what I've seen from Jacob Truba as a Ranger so far. Too many ups and downs from him. Nils Lundqvist, another unknown. Patrick Nemeth, I'm not a fan of him. I, I said that when they signed him. I'm not a fan. 
His, his foot speed still doesn't look good. Uh, I, I would hope that he kind of gets it together and really helps Nils Lundqvist out a bit, but I, I don't like what I've seen from him. So there are way too many question marks on this team for my liking. Well, it wouldn't be a show if I didn't kick my camera. Good job. Uh, you know something? I got to agree about the question marks. It's almost too many options. That's the way that I'll say it. You got to figure out who's going to be that sixth defenseman. And Lundqvist, Schneider, Jones. Because if it's if it's Jones and Schneider, there's a chance you can only throw them in a tandem. And then it's da 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 da. Where does where does Kratz all fit in? It's it's they need. I I I I always made the joke last year about the the tool song. I know the pieces fit. Well, if they fit where are they uh where are they fitting that's where it comes into and that's what gerard glant's gonna have to figure out and we'll see what he could do anthony what do you not like about the rangers i was gonna say center depth but you know phil kind of pushed me over the edge to kind of pretty much say what he said um it's good to have a young team but there's so many young players that they're kind of relying on to to play to their potential to really take that next step and that's tough he, you know he, he mentioned it all like you know igor lafreniere uh kako heedle um you know Nil, nils lundquist to to a, a lesser extent um i was I'll paint, i'm not saying it's gonna happen but what he was trying to portray is that i'll paint this picture if all those young guys don't let's say really step up or play at the same level they did or or even take a step back who who do you who do you have on the team to make a playoff team yeah Panarin's amazing Zabenjad is good and Fox is good but are those three guys enough to counteract not getting anything else from a lot of the a lot of the roster I mean the answer is probably no I mean Mark I know you love cry to your president's fan club but I mean he's not he's not a guy you he's not a guy you rely on no. Um, is that that's because that's really who's left after that? Kreider, Ryan Strom. Strom, but Strom you don't have to worry about too much because he has that good chem- chemistry with Panarin. But you know, for me, that's that's something I I I don't like about them. But you know, it could go the other way if if all these young guys take the next step and you know really excel, then then forget about it. They're you know yeah. they're going to be really excited. Um, so it's one of those things and go one way or the other, and you know. Or maybe kind of fall somewhere between the middle, and if that happens, then you know, then that's what they would call like a, a bubble team. So if it goes really good, definite playoff team. If it kind of falls right in the middle, bubble. And <laughs> if what we just talked about, if they don't, then you know, you're talking, you know, another year without the playoffs. So, well, it's actually great that you said it just like that because that's what the next question is. If everything breaks right, how far can they go? And Phil, we got to, uh, actually, you know what, Anthony, keep going. Yeah, go on, Anthony. Go. <laughs> uh, so I think if everything breaks right, um, they're a playoff team. Um, I know the three of us in our predictions of the Metro, me and Phil, are pretty identical. Mark, you just flipped the Islanders and the Hurricanes. So for me, if everything goes right, you know, three, four in the Metro, which obviously three is a, a definitive playoff team, four is probably wild card, but um, that's – that's where I could see absolutely happening for the Rangers. You know, like I said, this this division, there's a lot of question marks with Pittsburgh. I, I really don't like them. And Phil Dan Rosen kind of agreed with us. Um, you know, he still thinks the Caps are a playoff team. And, and that's fair because, you know, I think, you know, that's that's very plausible. Um, but them, you know, they're getting older. You know, Flyers, they're like Jekyll and High. You don't know which Flyers team you're going to get. seems like every other year they flip-flop. So, um yeah, I, I think if everything breaks right, the Rangers could be right there in that, you know, three, four spot in Metro, uh, maybe five. And, you know, it, in some cases, the f- number five spot could make them have made the playoffs, especially if, you know, you're talking no wild cards out of the Atlantic. But that's another topic, which um, they're a little stronger, too. But, yeah, so that's kind of where I could see if everything goes right. They're a playoff team. Phil. Yeah, I I really liked Leo's comment here before because uh, I I think that's pretty accurate. I think it's very fair. Uh, they're a top four team in the Metro if everything goes right. I, I think they could even be third, possibly second place in that division if everything goes right. I still think the Islanders are the cream of the crop. 
Carolina does have some questions, especially on defense. Goaltending. I mean, especially if you're employing Tony D'Angelo to play minutes in the NA, or minutes at even strength. I mean, he's great on the power play, but at even strength, he is an absolute disaster. So I, I would definitely say at this point, if everything goes right, they could be a possible top three team in, in that division, especially with Pittsburgh's issues. Washington, they're an old core. Are, are they going to start to fall apart? Are, are you going to start to see the effects of Alexander Ovechkin missing a handful of games throughout his illustrious NHL career? Or is Nicholas Backstrom's injury going to be an ongoing problem throughout the season? Is their age going to be a factor? It, 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 can, can Ilya Samsonov step up and finally be that number one goalie? Or is he just going to be a hyped prospect that was really good as a prospect, but kind of goes to the wayside in the NHL and really isn't that great of an NHL starter there. They have some questions too. So I, I would say if everything breaks good for the Rangers, uh, I'm, I'm saying a top three team, maybe, maybe the fourth seed as well in, in the division. I think they could even possibly win a playoff round depending on who they draw. Now, Gerard Gallant did coach a team to the Stanley Cup Finals, and they actually won game one of the Stanley Cup Finals. I'm not making that prediction right here. I think the Rangers can make the playoffs and be a tough out in the first round, possibly win a round. It's going to be tough to put to, to factor them uh, ahead of that. I like them as a playoff team this year. I think they got a lot of good pieces that can make sure that they get there. And I don't think the Metro is going to be without a reach. Uh, there's there's going to be plenty of teams that are going to be knocking each other off in the Metro. You, you might see, like, that might be the toughest division between one to seven. Uh, now, one to six, I'm sorry, uh, out, of, out of all the teams. So we'll see about that. But again, I, I think the Rangers are a playoff team. What could derail a good season for this team? Yeah, you want to start with me or? Oh, sorry, Phil, go to you. And basically, what we're talking about, we, we, what we were talking about before, the, the young guys not stepping up could is probably the biggest thing. And I include the, the three forwards. I include um, Keandre Miller and Igor in, in that. Nils Lundqvist, I'm not really going to include because I don't think they're going to ask a lot of him. Um, I think if he gets onto the first power play unit at some point this season, I think that would be a miracle. So it's it's really it's really Kako Lafreniere, Kravtsov, Miller, and Shesterkin. If those guys don't take the next steps in their development, I, I think the Rangers might be missing the playoffs. They might be looking on the outside end. And I think that might lead to some major changes in the following off season. So I would say to you, if, Cock if uh, Lundquist or Lundquist is on the top power play unit, that might be a disaster because that means out of box is injured or not mm. effective or something like that. Mm. Uh, I think it all rests on Igor Sisterkin, uh, whether or not it's going to be a good season or not. It's even though I said before Gallant's navigated through tough times with goaltenders, it's just it's on Sisterkin. That's just what I think, Anthony. Well, to be different from you guys, um, I would say a, a significant injury to Panarin or Sisterkin. If uh, many of those guys are out long term, I mean that's that's a big problem. All right, so finally. This is what we're going to set in stone and replay the tape at the end of the year. John, your season prediction for the New York Rangers. I'm going to say fourth in the division. And I think they probably get knocked out in the first round of playoffs. I'm going to go third in the division, knocked out in the first round of the playoffs. Anthony. Um, fourth in the Metro. And lose in the first round of the playoffs. Out of curiosity, guys, since you got them both at four, who are they losing to? Because that means they're playing a team from the Atlantic. I would say they'd probably end up drawing Tampa Bay, and Tampa Bay would kill them in a playoff series. Tampa Bay and those that Tampa Bay and those New York teams, Anthony. <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean, there's two. Depending on yeah, that because Ford mean they're one of the last two wild cards. So um, 
yeah, I guess, uh, you know, Tampa Bay. I'm going to be bold and I'm going to say the Florida Panthers. So I hear it's the Florida Panthers, I think, would still kill them in a playoff series, too. Especially, <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, no, in, in your scenario, mine, mine, they would probably lose to Carolina. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. Guys, so that is our predictions for the New York Rangers season and all the things that we're focusing on in our preview. We're going to try to be a little bit faster to get to the Bar Talk segment in a moment. We are not doing honest press conferences today for that reason, but we want to know your thoughts. You're giving us you're giving us some good ones in the comments. I will try not to click on a comment when Phil is trying to click on a comment. But <laughs> <laughs> but um but anyway, so put it all down in the comments below, especially if you're watching this and when we cut all this up. So now if you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hmm, your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.